Yeah. Okay, so last presentation, guys. Okay. Um, I'm Mallory, if you don't know me. I hope you do, but I'm really sorry to do it. But um, mine, I, as I was going through my program, or as I was going through my research, um, stiffness and moment curvature, there's not really a relationship, but there is a relationship with ductility. So I think it still says stiffness on the sheet, but I switched it to ductility after getting stuck. But what this is going to focus on um, is obviously a moment curvature relationship. But another thing I wanted to look into was obviously you can have this with steel and concrete, but what we're mainly going to be using is a composite structure and how ductility is going to affect and how different um, changing different parts of our equations and changing different constants are going to have an effect on the moment curvature diagram. So I included my abstract on here, and it's pretty much a summary of what I just said. Um, there's a relationship between moment and curvature, obviously, whenever it's being the flex. Um, the main analysis that we're going to be using for this is we're going to use a section diagram with your Whitney stress block and your general stress block. Um, and we're going to be focusing, once again, on the different materials and how changing different things will affect the ductility of a structure. So just kind of a review, a, ductil a ductile material is when a material stretches under tensile stress. So steel is obviously a very ductile material and it has a defined yield point, whereas concrete is not very ductile. So that's why we put steel in our composite structures. So that therefore makes the concrete stronger and it can actually work a little bit better in tension because we all know it cracks in tension. And that's why concrete is mainly using compression, so it's going to be stronger in compression. Once again, things that you should already know. So I'm going to run through a partial example um, just to kind of give you an idea of how we would find one of these points on the moment curvature graph. Ultimately, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for a minimum of five points. We'll give you kind of the best estimate of how your curve is going to be. Um, I picked the most difficult one, so we're about to have some fun with this. All right, so the very first thing, you're going to normally get your section, you're going to have some sort of steel support, um, you'll get a distance, hopefully you can have all this information, it's pretty general stuff. Okay, fun stuff. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to refer to your strength of materials binder and you're going to pull out your good old Whitney stress and strain blocks um, and then we're going to continue that on and also get our general stress diagram and that's going to be the one on the far right over here. These are kind of generalizations because as you go through each point, you're going to draw new ones, reference back. Um, the one that we're going to be using is at a strain of point zero zero three. Um, which is going to be at the extreme fiber. So as an estimate, you can do the summation of the forces and summation of your moments, and you can solve for an estimated moment and an estimated um, curvature. As we get and we go through the math and we actually do the integrals of these um, lines and you find the equations for the lines, you're going to get a more, a more precise and a more exact but sometimes if you're just trying to get a generalization of what your moment curvature diagram is going to look like, just doing the moment and the summation of the forces is just kind of a quick, easy way to do it um, if you don't want to do a lot of math, which the way it's not the better. But if you want to do it the difficult way, we have to go through our code, and there's a lot of constants we have to find. Um, some of these constants are straight across the board, so as for concrete, um, your weight of your concrete isn't going to change that much. Um, your confined strain, which your unconfined strain is without the steel addition, and then your confined is with the steel addition. So as you can see in this graph down here, if you do not have the steel, it's going to fail a lot earlier than if you have them combined. Um, also note the difference in the steel diagram, where there's kind of a defined yield point, but it still can extend past the yield point and go up to an ultimate yield, so that gives it even just a little bit more strength. All these can be, like I said, found in the code. These two are the only two that are really different, where they're dependent on the bar size. So other than that, just general things. So if we look at our analysis of the extreme fiber, um, your curvature is not that hard to find. It's just going to be whatever this value is um, divided by C. C is going to be, for this case, um, if you do your summation of the forces, it's 0. C is going to be the value. Um, along the side, so it's going to be about right here is going to be where your summation of the forces is going to be zero. Um, 
I'm using similar triangles and manipulating our Whitney stress block. That's how you're going to find your strain and your stress that are equivalent. And then your T value is the force that's going to be opposite of, let's see if we can go back. Over here, it's going to be the force that equals out this stress right here. Okay, this is where we get to do a lot of really fun math. Um, I'm not going to walk you through each equation, but all these equations don't really change as you go through. They're just going to be plugging in different numbers. They're going to have a different um, stress and strain diagram. So they're going to change a little bit as far as the numbers go, but not really as values or constants. Um, ultimately, you're going to get a moment of 391, which was pretty similar to our estimated. I think it was 353 was estimated. So like we said, it's a little bit different, but if you wanted to just do the short version, you can do that too, but this is going to get you a more precise, more exact. And additional points of interest that you would want to do, and you want to find your plastic moment, which is going to be right where this breaks after the first yield. Um, you want to find your ultimate curvature, which is going to be where you have a fee value, but there's no more moment because your beam is completely deflected. Um, another thing that you want to do is we found the 0 .003 strain. You would also want to do other strains at that top fiber, like 0 .001, 0 .002, ones that are less because that's your max you would have to go down. You can't go above the max. And here is our graph. So you can see that this point right here is the estimated. And this was if, after we went through and did all the exact calculations, so it's a little bit different. Um, our plastic moment is going to be right here. So our first one, if you're normally going to have some sort of a straight line um, up until that plastic <coughs> moment. And then your moment will go up a little bit and your curvature will continue and it'll deflect a lot faster um, because this is right after it yields. So after something yields, it breaks a lot faster. Um, how does ductility break into all this? Well, the ductility of the section is ultimately defined by the curvature of the ultimate divided by the curvature of the yield. Um, there's different things that we can do. Some of the things, if you increase your um, F prime C, your ductility is going to increase. Same with your F Y, it will actually reduce the ductility. And if you increase your section depth, it will only slightly increase the ductility. If you really increase your section depth, which you don't want too big of a beam, um, then it would start to have more effect, but typically if we're increasing our section depth, we're not going to do it by a whole lot, so therefore it's not going to have that much of an effect throughout the structure. And conclusion. So the reason we do this is um, a composite beam, by having a composite beam, it allows a concrete beam to deflect more and have more strength than it would to just be if it was concrete. Um, Adding that steel in creates an ideal moment curvature relationship instead of it just immediately breaking off right after the plastic moment. It just continues to deflect instead of just breaking. Um, another thing is by, let's see, by analyzing a combination of the concrete and steel, we can see that this gives a steady relationship rather than a really steep ratio or a really just low flat ratio. Um, so then we can be, it can be more predictable and we can know how the thing would build. And that's it.